That should be the natural reaction. If you think about what the lamb has done, the natural reaction ought to be thank you. Genesis chapter number 13. I'm starting a, a series today over the next several weeks. The name of this series is going to be called When Others Make Your Life Difficult. How many of you all, like the young lady who was getting baptized, she said, I forgive those who broke me. I also forgive myself. Over the next several weeks, I'm going to talk to you about how to overcome being the victim of a crime. Anybody innocent, like I, I, I've done something to some people, but I didn't do anything to that one. And that... And I was hurt by that person. For the next several weeks, we're going to talk about how to deal with people who make your life difficult. And I want to thank Pastor Torrance for baptizing. We need to baptize him. That's who needs to be baptized. He, he the one that needs, he is crazy. I, but my wife said something, and she said, you know, I love what he's doing. That's the joy of the Lord, that we ought to be in church and that we ought to be able to laugh and have fun and in, in our service, he's a comedian. We go from laughing at him to then crying when the dancers are up here. It's just, it's that dichotomy. And, and it's amazing that it happened that way because life is the same way. Like, you could be laughing Monday. I mean, I mean, you left church on fire some Sundays, ready to go take on the world, ran into a negative person and just lost all. Today, we're going we're gonna to talk about the contentious life between Abraham and Lot. Something happened that is not uh, familiar as it relates to being preached often. I want you to go to Genesis 13, verse number 5. Remember, I told you a couple weeks ago, Lot's father and grandfather died, and Abraham took him in. Abraham took him in. We didn't have anything. Coached him up from not being a believer to becoming a believer. He was poor and raggedy, and then Abraham lifted him up and made him rich. And it's amazing that in our text, he turns on the very person who turned him on. And the Bible says in chapter 13, verse 5, that Lot, which went with Abraham and his flocks and herds and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was too great. In other words, Lot was almost as rich now as Abraham. And it's almost like a gang war, like Lot and Abraham, they become so big, Lot forgot who turned him on, and now he's turning on the person who turned him on. And while they're arguing, I want you to look at verse 7, because the Bible says, and this is going to be key in the sermon, while they're arguing, the Canaanites and the Perizzites are watching. You got to understand that nobody wins when the family feuds. That while you are arguing with each other, the enemy is looking at you go at it with each other saying, well, while the husband and the wife are arguing, I'm going to go get the son. Are, are y'all with me today? Verse 8, and Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife. I pray thee between me and thee and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen for, man, we family. Are we supposed to be? It's not the whole land before these separate, well, let, let me read it this way. It's not the whole land before thee, question mark. Watch this, separate thyself. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. I know I brought you this far, but nobody said we got to keep going together. I want you to stop feeling bad when you tell people you got to get off here. It's, a, it's right here in the text. He says, separate yourself. I pray thee from me, if thou will take the left hand, then I will go right. Or if thou depart right, I will go left. He didn't even say you go left and I'll go right. He just said whatever direction you go in, I'm going in the opposite. Lord, help me in this church today. I want to talk about on, on this subject, I want to talk about going from affliction to abundance. I want you to give everybody a high five on your way down to your seat and say this is the year for you to go from affliction to abundance. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
lest I hold you too long, the Bible lets us know that in our last text, we talked about this two weeks ago. How many of y'all remember when I said that Abraham had left Canaan because there was a famine in the land? And he left, and he went to Egypt, and he left pain, seeking prosperity, but leaving where God called him to be to go where he was comfortable almost cost him his wife. When he got to Egypt, the Bible says that Pharaoh sees his wife and decides, you know what? She looks like she needs to be in my harem of concubines. And so in order to keep his wife from being infiltrated by the Pharaoh, Abraham makes a deal with his wife that she would pretend to be his sister. And as she pretends to be his sister, he salvages relationship, but not almost, not all the way because, in fact, Sarah was invited to Pharaoh's house, which was the first initiation of marital bliss. And somehow God made a way, and it didn't happen. And we thank God for the grace that sometimes we can make a bad decision and it'll come out all right. And, and if I had anybody in here that was honest and just upfront and upright, even though we're not at the end of the sermon and this is not typically where we get excited, somebody will thank God that he made your wrong right. That's just a fact. That every one of us in here chose Egypt when God said stay in Canaan. Because Canaan was drying up, we thought we were justified to go to Egypt. And God says, I did not tell you to go even though it was drying up. I wanted you to stay to see if you would trust me to bring a raven to feed you there. Thank God that he looks beyond our faults. Thank you, Jesus. And so Abraham, he returns to Canaan. He returns to Canaan. Everybody say he returns. But returning did not stop the pain that came as a result of leaving in the wrong season. You see, sometimes we leave God and we think that when we return, the pain should stop the day we come to our senses. God said, just because you return today doesn't mean that I'm going to cut off the pain you're feeling for leaving in the wrong season. This is what confuses most Christians because when they come back to God, they think he's Santa Claus, that he ought to come down the chimney and drop the presents under the tree and that he ought to bless us the day that we come to our senses. God says, no, you may have come home today, but I'm still going to let you feel yesterday's decision. And some of you all in here right now are thinking God is not good. God is so good that he didn't let you die in Egypt. God is so good that he did not let you die in your decision that even though you have been allowed to come back home, prodigal daughter, prodigal son, and even though you had to hear it and even though you had to deal with God and even though you had to suffer some consequences, is there anybody in here want to thank God that he will still not let your foot be dashed against a stone? That's the kind of God that we serve, that even when we make bad choices and decisions, man, this is what I love about God. When I'm bad, he's still good. That could be a sermon in and all of itself. Just touch three people and say, when you're bad, he's still good. You can be sitting in a good place and still be a bad person. Being in church doesn't make you a good person no more than being in a garage makes you a car. You can go in the garage right now, you're still a person. And you can be in church and still be mean and full of hell and evil. But the thing about God is that he's so good. He's so good, listen to this, he's so good that the person sitting next to you don't even know who you are, and that's a good thing. I know you got your suit on and you were just offended that I said hell and all that because you so saved, but if the person sitting next to you knew who you really were, they'd look at you crazy for worrying about somebody saying hell because you're full of it, you're full of it. It's, it's amazing how we come into church and think just because we're sitting in a pew or sitting in a chair, then all of a sudden that makes us better. You're not better because you came here. You just, you just saved by grace. Come on, somebody. Anybody here know you saved by grace? I want to make sure I'm talking to the right audience. Abraham comes in the house 
and he sees Lot arguing with his employees. Now, now he's causing problems because now, now he, Abraham, like Lot, hey, <laughs> you messing up my money now, bro. You know, when, when, when you was just, when you was just grieving and crying and, and, I, and I took you out of your father's and your grandfather's care and I put you in my care, I was good with that, but, but, but now you're messing with my money. Now watch this. Now Lot turns his back on Abraham. Now look, grief brought him the gift of Abraham. And now that Abraham has given him the gift of financial prosperity, look at how now he has received the gift and has forgotten about the giver. Is there anybody in the Lighthouse Church this morning that knows what it feels like to help somebody out of a tough spot and the moment they get two dimes to rub together, they forgot when you were there for them when they didn't have a pot nor a window. Do I have anybody in here? I I'm trying to keep it PG and holy. But have you ever... I can't understand how people get amnesia. That when you needed me, I was there. That when you didn't have anything, I was there. That I sacrificed for you. And now all of a sudden, you're on your feet and you forgot who put you on. Be careful with people. I was there for you. I was there for you when nobody else was there for you. When your marriage was in trouble, you called me on the phone. When, when your children need to be babysat, I was watching them. When your rent needed to be paid, I'm the one that helped you make the deficit. Now all of a sudden, God done blessed you and you have forgotten about who he used to get you to the place where you can sustain yourself. Oh, don't you worry about people who rolled in on you because when they let you go, remember, they've got to go back down that trail and they won't have your assistance when they've got to return back to Canaan. Oh, I wish I had somebody in this place today. So I want to talk to all of y'all who got that heart that helped people. I want to talk to all of y'all who've been that friend, that listening ear, let people call you at 2 o'clock in the morning and wear you out and, and make you lose sleep. And now all of a sudden, they don't understand all, what you're doing. And now all of a sudden, they got a problem. Don't you worry about it because God is the rewarder of those who seek him. Abraham is confused. Like, Lot, I understand that you don't like my decisions, but boy, don't you forget, I'm the one that turns you on. One for me, you wouldn't even be where you are. And I'm not saying I'm totally responsible for how you've arrived, but I do know God used me to get you here. And now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, you arguing with me? Me. Okay, okay, let's see how this is going to end up then, Lot, because you think you're somebody. You got a couple of dollars now, and, and, and you think that now you don't need me. You, you don't understand. I am the anointing in your life. And when you lose me, you lose what I brought. What most people don't understand is that when God uses you to bless them, they think they get to keep the blessing and get rid of you. I'm here to tell you. Touch your name and say, when I leave, so goes the blessing. Oh, I wish you a high five. Somebody say, so you better, you better swallow your pride and you better, if I'm mean, you better take it. And if you don't like how I talk to you, you better pray about it. Because if God takes me out of your life. Abraham and Lot, Pastor Torrance, they both bosses now. They both, they both bosses now. You know, no, Joe, they, they eye to eye. They, they on the same level. So Lot thinks. So Lot thinks, just because our house is now the same size and just because our car is now the same price and just because you can wear what I can wear and, and now we got on the same shoes, we ain't even because I'm the one that turns you, which means that my car could be bigger if I didn't pervert it. <laughs> which means my house could be bigger if I didn't pour virtue in you. It, it means my car could be more. I shared me with you, which means I split myself up to make you better. Oh, God. 
I want to talk to you. I know some of y'all going through it right now when others make your life difficult and you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe they did me this way. I can't believe my family's doing me like this. I can't believe my friend turned their back on me like that. After all I've done for them, yeah, you might not like my decisions. You may not like who I'm dating. You may not, but what does that have to do with us? Touch your name and say, who I'm dating ain't your business. Where I live ain't your business. How I do my hair ain't your business. We got to fall out because you don't like my choices. Then I should have made another choice when I picked you. I'm going to preach into this house until y'all get mad at me or run around here and give God some glory because over the next four weeks, I'm going to show you how to know that you don't need people who came late in your life because you were making it before you met them. So just touch somebody and say, I didn't know them at first, and I was making it, which means if I don't know them later, I can still. Uh-huh. So now they arguing. Now they arguing. And really, Lot, Lot, you tripping. Because Abraham, even though you don't like his decision, you should respect him enough not to argue with him. How are you arguing with the man who helped you when your daddy died, who helped you when your granddaddy died, who took you in his house as the father of the faithful and you were an unbeliever? He took you in his house and now you got a little substance. And now you think you got enough clout to argue with Abraham? Point number one. Understand, everybody, there is what is called the affliction of abundance. Oh. Everybody say the affliction of abundance. The first thing that happens when you are the giver is that the gifted often forgets the giver. If you're doing it for them, you might as well stop. If you're doing it so they'll say thank you, quit. If you're doing it so they'll pat you on the back and say, you know what, I'm so grateful for you, stop. Because most people will drop you off at the intersection of you helped me and I made it. Right there, oh God, somebody, oh, that's a tweet, write that down. Most people will drop you at the intersection of you helped me and I made it. And once they see the I made it sign, they forgot the you helped me sign. Somebody say, but I'm going to survive. How many survivors do I have in here that survive when people make your life difficult? It's amazing. It's amazing. Like you have got some unmitigated gall and audacity to be arguing with Abraham. You might not agree with him, but you wouldn't have nothing if it wasn't for him. You know what? We hear so much about the problems that poverty cause. I don't want to talk about that over the next four weeks. I want to talk about the afflictions that abundance bring. Because when you're broke, everybody want to help you. When you're broke, they'll pray for you at the altar, won't they? They'll surround you. When your child is sick, the whole church will pray for you. When your car's broke down, we'll take an offering to get you one. Drive up here in the S550, hmm, they don't need me. <laughs> Mess around, have all your bills paid, hmm, they got to pull themselves up by the bootstraps like I did. Haven't you recognized that the more God blesses you, the less people want to help you? And what most people don't understand is that being okay in the area of finances doesn't mean that I don't need anybody. I don't need the money, but I need somebody I can trust. I don't need the money, but I'm tired of folk turning their back on me. I don't need the money, but I'm tired of turning you on and you turning me off. I don't need your resources. I need your respect. Oh, who am I helping in here? I don't need you to, I don't need marriage counseling. I just need to make sure that me and my wife can trust you. 
I, I don't need you to babysit my children. Yes, you got a housekeeper. I don't need you to, to, to watch my dog because I can hire somebody to come and do that. But I need somebody that if I talk to you at night, I don't have to wake up to your room in the morning. Lord, I, I, Lord, I, I can feel y'all talking to me right now. Come on, holler at your boy. I can feel you in the spirit because some of y'all about to smack the taste out of somebody's mouth. And if it ain't for this sermon, I'm about to save somebody's life because after you hear this word, you're going you're gonna to say, you know what? Fret not thyself because of evil doers, for they shall soon be cut. I feel the Holy Ghost. Just touch your name and say, ooh. You in trouble. Your daddy messed around and gave you a purple coat. You didn't, you didn't ask for it. You didn't politic for it. Your daddy just had you in his old age and decided to bless you. And now you got a dream and a purple coat. And here come other people that want to throw you in the pit. It ain't even your fault. Ooh, y'all in trouble. Ooh, ooh, y'all in trouble? You done mess around and got blessed and got favor on your life and keep surviving every attack of the enemy and you think the devil is just going to sit back? Oh, I came to tell you that the devil is coming after you, but be not weary in well-doing because for every pit, God's got a palace. And I'm telling somebody in here today that no matter what they have done to you, God's about to flip the script and change the dimensions of your life. Give three people a high five and say, God's about to turn that thing around. That's why you got to praise anyhow. That's why you got to worship anyhow. Don't let anybody rip you of your kind heart and your spirit. Lift up your head and keep on saying hallelujah. Keep on hugging evil folk at the job. Keep on praying for those who despitefully use you because God is going to reward you. It's hard being blessed. How many blessed people I got in the house? It's hard. Bible even says it this way, it's harder for a rich man to enter into heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. It's hard for blessed people to fit in. Can I tell you what your biggest problem is? You're trying to fit in a place you don't fit. And you know what your other problem is? You're trying to fit people in your life that don't fit. You got too many squares in your circle. You, 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 you've got, you trying to force pieces in because you lonely. You trying to force pieces in because they're a couple and you a couple. You trying to, for, I remember I used to try to force my wife to be friends with my friend's friends. You don't have to do that. You, you trying to, you're trying to force it. Nobody told you that you and your boss had to be friends. You're forcing it. Oh, Lord, if I'm going to say this, and I know this is going to make some of y'all mad. Y'all know Abraham and Lot are related, which means you don't even have to be friends. All right, okay, let me move on, because I know some of y'all, you, 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 can't, you can't hear none of that. But I do know that the Bible says that once Abraham got there and found out that Lot wasn't about to write, he said, separate yourself from me. He said, if you go left, I'm going right. If you go right, I'm going left because you are toxic to my environment. If everybody in, if all of my herdsmen are saying that something is wrong with you, then I've got to understand that everybody ain't wrong. Why do you keep defending the person that everybody in your life keeps telling you you need to defect? Your mama told you they wasn't about nothing. Your sister told you they wasn't about nothing. You know they ain't about nothing. And yet you're still trying to make it fit. This is what we're going to be doing for the next four weeks. Y'all good with it? Do you know what? You know the door that the devil uses most often? The door of plenty. That's, that's where he comes in. 
the most prosperous door that you have is the one the devil is coming through. That's where he's coming from. Look in the area where you went in, that's where he's coming from. The loss he already got. Whatever area in your life you're happy in, you happy with your job? Here he comes, right there. You met somebody that's cute, you like them, y'all about, about to be together forever, huh? <laughs> Here he comes. You met your soulmate, right? After you meet your soulmate, you're going to meet a spirit. I ain't even mean to say that. Write that down because I'm saying some good stuff today. I want to say it again after today. Whatever door you winning in, you at church, you comfortable, you happy, you got a family, here comes some negative Christian that's going to make you wish you would have never come. Whatever area you winning in, here he comes. Now, you know, Abraham went over there to Egypt and got rich. Yeah, he wasn't rich before he went. He got over there. You read Genesis chapter 12. The Lord says, you know what, man? I'm about to bless you as many as the stars in the sky. I'm going to bless you to be a great nation. I'm going to make you a father of all the nations. Abraham just came up. Abraham is a wealthy man now. And then he says, you know what, Lot? I teach everybody in my house. I taught all 318 of my servants what I knew. You think I'm not going to teach my son? He said, I'm going to teach you everything I know. And Lot comes in there, and he's, he's arguing with, with Abraham. And what he doesn't understand is that, that, that Mar, while they're arguing, the Perizzites and the Canaanites are also in the land. And they're looking. Mm-hmm. They over there arguing about, this my land, this my land, this my water, this my well. There ain't enough water for both cattle. There ain't enough water for enough flock. Y'all move over there. It's like, it's like the Crips and the Bloods fighting. This my block. This my set. They arguing back and forth. Meanwhile, the Latin kings watching. The other gang is watching and they like, uh, okay. I watch National Geographic a lot. I love watching lions hunt. Have you ever seen a lions hunt? All them sisters get together and they have a conversation with each other and they be like, all right, Mufasa, you go over there. Tumba, you go over there. <laughs> and they surround one of those gazelles or something and the gazelle think they ain't going to do nothing. They just sit there and look at them. As soon as the gazelle get lazy and think, oh, he ain't going to do nothing, they look at each other and say, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and one of the lionesses, she'll pounce and cause panic. But what the gazelle doesn't know is that if he goes left, got Go right, got. Oh, you want to go north? Got somebody over there. Because what the enemy does when you're not paying attention is he surrounds you. Causes an argument and then reaps the reward of the scatter. So, so when the enemy starts a problem in your life and everything begins to scatter, understand that he's already set a trap. You understand what I'm telling you? So now that Abraham and Lot and his herdsmen are arguing, anytime you're arguing about something that is not your destiny, you have left destiny to argue over history. So now they are over here arguing about history and the Canaanites and the Perizzites are about to steal destiny. Hmm, Lord, help me in this church. That's why you got to be level-headed. That's why you got you to gotta maintain your temper. That's why you can't let people frustrate you. That's why you can't just let your mouth say whatever come to your head. That's why you can't get angry and just walk out the house and never return. Why? Because when you scatter, then the enemy comes in and takes what you built. 
How do you think the enemy becomes so rich? Off of the things that the blessed abandon. The enemy doesn't work for wealth. He steals what you leave behind. You date somebody, you give your life up for them, you tell your mama, I don't care what you got to say, I'm married them anyway, you marry them and then let the devil take them. Look at, look at some of y'all got spouses in your life, you turned your back on everybody to get them. Your mama told you don't do it, you did it. Your daddy said don't do it, you did it. Your heart said don't do it, you did it. Your money said don't do it, you did it. And now you're going to abandon somebody you left everybody for. The enemy doesn't make wealth. He gets it from people who leave it behind. Are y'all praying with me? God always sends somebody to warn us. We just don't listen. And the younger you are, the dumber you are. Any young dummies in here like me? When your mama told you, boy, that don't make no sense in the world. And you'd be like, but mama, you don't know. This is a different time. <laughs> Them back in the olden days. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Come on. <laughs> dumb is still dumb in 2018 like it was in 2001 or whatever, how, 2001. <laughs> Touch your name and say, dumb is still dumb. <laughs> Ain't it still dumb? Mm-hmm. Abraham and Lot up there arguing, and now... Everything they work for is being stolen by people who didn't work for it. You got to be on refusal to let the devil come and take what you built. You the one that was in labor for 22 hours and pregnant nine months. You going to let the devil take your child over one bad argument, over one bad mistake, over one bad... No, you better fight for that child. You've been fighting for him. You took pills to get pregnant, became fertile and did all that, and you going to come and let the devil take him? Had them by somebody you don't like no more? And you're going to let the devil take them? Work your hard-earned money and pay that mortgage for a house that you know you're overpaying for? And you're going to let the devil come and run it? Abraham said, I'm going from affliction and I'm going to take action. Lock, come here, boy. I don't allow no arguing in my house. Oh, I wish we had some parents that would stand back up. Oh, y'all, you know, Lord, forgive me for this, but some of y'all, the younger parents, y'all just done got weak. You just watered down. You done got watered down. We used to get our butts beat. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing. We got a whooping wherever we acted up, and then they'll call home and tell your mama that I whooped your child because they was in my rose garden, and then when you got home, you got another beating. I grew up in school, we used to get paddles and swats. Y'all young parents, if somebody say something to your child, they, your child call you on their cell phone from the class, talking about mama, this nigga up here tripping, and you, I'm on my way down now. I said it. She tripping off of her. That's what your children say. Mama, he up here tripping. He talking to me crazy. I, and I'm on my way up there. You ain't even asked what happened. And you about to go whoop the principal for something your child do to you at home. They hard head at home. They don't listen at home. They don't do their chores at home. What makes you think they're in school doing the right thing? I'll let your boy. There ain't no sense of getting no attitude. Abraham said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I prophesy and speak unto the life of every parent. You better stand up and take back control of your house. Ain't no child got no business running your house. You running around there letting them close the door, scared to say, I wish you would. Close the door that I pay for. I kick that. Say, I ain't right. See, I, my whole attitude just got wrong. Abraham, take back over your house. You don't have to use the method I'm saying, but use a method. 
spare the rod, spoil the child. You can take that how you want to. You may not need to spank a child. Every child doesn't need a spanking. Some of them can learn from talking to, but you can't help a child when you're silent. Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they get old, they will not depart from it. You got to say something. Learn how to talk to your child, Abraham. And when you find the method that works for your child, then you can get your child on the right track. But doing nothing? Abraham said, we don't do that here. We ain't do it before you came, and you ain't going to bring that spirit in this house. Now, I'll tell you what. This is going to hurt some of the parents. I know. Oh, you don't want to listen? I tell you what, pack your stuff up and get on. That's what he told him. That's what he told him. You grown, so if you're grown, get gone. Bye. See you. Wouldn't want to be you. Don't let the doorknob hit you. Get out, Lot. Get out. Separate yourself from me. Do y'all hear what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, do we agree that Abraham was a man of God? Yes. Which means that it is not evil to separate yourself from people who bring toxicity into your life. Yes. There is nothing wrong when you recognize that somebody is not for you and separating yourself. Even Jesus will say to people who are not good for him, depart from me. We think something wrong with getting away from people who are not good for us. Oh, no, it's not. Abraham said, Lot, if I don't get you out of my house, I'm going to lose everything. Lord, let me help some. See, some of y'all got two, three, four children. Three of them, all right. One of them ain't worth. You need to go let them live with their daddy because they about to mess up your whole house. And you talking about, I'm their mama. I'm their mama. Sometimes helping your child is letting them go where they can grow. So some of y'all single mamas whose son acting up and acting a fool and around here punching holes in the wall and he want to go live with his daddy, but you want to hold the child because you want to let the daddy know you're in control. Is it more about you being in control or making sure you release the child so the child can grow so that the child can grow up and go in the way? Lord, help me in this church. This my baby. Sometimes you got to let your baby go with his daddy. You up here trying to raise him, and especially if you got a man who's saying, I'll take him. What's wrong with you? I think this is the best place for him. How so? Straight F's? That's the best place for him. Throwing baseballs through people's windows and rocks. That's the best place for him. No, the best place is where they can grow. And parents, you got to know that sometimes the best place for your children ain't with you. Lord, help me in this church. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to say nothing. I'm telling the truth. Sometimes the best place for your child is not with you. How can a bitter, angry parent make a prosperous child? Hey, if, I, if I wasn't using the Bible, I could understand the blank look. But I'm using scripture. Abraham, get out. Separate yourself then. You don't like how we do it? Go do it how you like it. You ain't see the prodigal son's daddy running out there telling him, I come back. He said, all right, go out there. When you spend all the money I gave you and after you finish with all these hookers and riders living, you're going to come back home. That's the same way I do church members. You want to go? Go. I'll be here when you get back. I work here. You ain't called me. You ain't came here. I've been gone six months and you ain't even called me. I didn't even know you was gone because I didn't even know you was here. How you expect me to call all of y'all? ain't but one of me is thousands of y'all. You know where I'm at. Holla at your boy. Don't work in ministry. Don't come to Bible study, but I'm supposed to know you're gone. You can get quiet, but it ain't going to shut me up. Y'all know that by now.
It's the prodigal's job to come back home. When you overestimate your value, you think people ought to chase you. You think things going to stop because you disappeared. Quit your job tomorrow and see if they close down. They have somebody right in your seat tomorrow. <laughs> Most of y'all don't know they already got somebody in the lineup. <laughs> they waiting on you to quit. That's the children, Jesus. The workers of iniquity. Let your Holy Ghost fall on them, Jesus. Some of them is angry, Lord. Touch them and say, be careful with abundance. You ain't never seen nobody with a guard in front of an empty vault. You never seen the police in front of a bank that's been closed down. They only guard the ones that got something in it. And the more you get in you, the more guarding you're going to have to do with your heart. Oh, y'all ain't here with me today. The Bible says that Jesus gave 12 disciples the opportunity to, to see abundance. And then he came back and them jokers were sleeping. Jesus said, could you not watch with me? <laughs> For one hour. He said, if you're going to be abundant, you're going to have to watch. Fight and pray. Oh, I know. The spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. Do you see how I just, see, this is what's wrong with Christians. I'm going to have to quit. I ain't going to be able to finish this sermon. I just read a whole scripture to you, and most of us missed the interpretation of the scripture because you, you separate that into three things. That's one scripture. Oh, Lord. Jesus says to them, can you not watch with me for one hour? You're going to have to watch, fight, and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's one scripture. That ain't three different texts. We split that up. Boom. This one mean that one. This mean, no, it all goes together. You're going to have to understand that there is affliction and abundance. And whenever the enemy comes after you, you're going to have to take action. You stop sitting around just waiting on things to work out. I'm just waiting and just waiting and just waiting. The Bible says in the book of Chronicles there was an evil queen named Althelia, and when her tail got to acting a fool, the Bible says they took a sword and cut her head off, and when her head was cut off, peace came back. There are some things that ain't going to be peaceful into your life until you cut the head off of it. Lord, help me. I wish I had a Bible reading church here today. Touch your neighbor and say, cut the head off. You cut the head off. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 and 10, when the wicked perish, there is shouting in the land. There are some things that ain't going to, your life, you ain't going to shout until you get rid of wicked folks. You ain't going to have peace in your life until you cut the head off of some of the relationships that you can't get rid of. God says, I'm waiting on you to cut the head off of the serpent. I have given you the power to tread on the serpent's head. You didn't know that being a Christian, you could also cut. You thought in order to be a good Christian, you just got to pray for everybody. After you finish praying for them, cut them. Or you can do whatever order you want to. Cut them first and then pray. I don't care as long as you do both. Touch three people say, you need to cut it. Just need to cut it. You need to cut it. You need to cut it. Y'all ready for this last point? How many of y'all enjoying this? Because I know, I know some of y'all, you know, the only way you don't enjoy a sermon like this is when you think I'm talking about you. <laughs> so if the shoe fit, that's what Prophet R. Kelly said. He said, if the shoe fits, you got to go ahead on and wear it. But if I ain't talking about you, if you are not the difficult person and you are the one who is the victim of the difficult people, this sermon is liberating you. So it just depends on who you are. Just that, Reverend, we both. <laughs> That's the truth, isn't it? That in this sermon, we can fit ourselves on both sides of this. Last point. After he takes action, 
God accelerates. Did you not know that some of the things in your life that are taking a long time is because God is waiting on you to make a decision? God is literally looking at you saying, what are you going to do about this? You're asking me what I'm going to do. I'm not doing anything. I didn't ask you to make them your friend. I didn't ask you to marry them. I didn't ask you to do. What, what do you want me to do? You got in it on your own. <laughs> Abraham said, all right, here's my compromise. You go left, I go right. You go right, I go left. Abraham said, I will pick whatever you don't. I'm so through with you that I'll take what you don't want. You want the house? You can have it. I'll go to the apartment. Some of y'all right now arguing in litigation over a house and over a car and over a dog. When you want to be done, you say, you can have all this. Just give me my peace. You, you are elongating your own pain, arguing over a dog you don't like anyway, but just so you can win. Take the couch. Take the house. Take the car. Just leave me with the name. You got me. Anime, eat the cake. Just leave me with the name. Only about a few of y'all got there. Who, who am I talking? Leave me with the name. Because if you leave me with the name, I can go back and make it again. Leave me with my mind. I can think myself happy again. Leave me with my peace. I can shout until I feel good again. Is there anybody in here to say, devil, you can have all this stuff, but you cannot lay your hands on my praise. I got to let y'all go. It's getting late. Y'all got two minutes. I really need three, but I know y'all ready to go. No, I just quit. I just do it at the second service. Because I, I need to tell you one more thing, but I know y'all got to go. All right. Ebony, this is how it ends. Uh, Lot say, uh, whatever you want, you can have. Whatever you don't want, I'll take. Watch what he says. Lot says, I'll tell you what. I want the plains of Jordan. Because the Jordan River has provided the topography with lush vegetation. From a bird's eye view, the Jordan Plains are the best plains because it has a river, it has water, it has lush vegetation, it has everything a man would need. Man, I need to save this for later, God. What, he, what Lot doesn't understand is that even when you make good choices against somebody anointed, God curses your choice. So what Lot doesn't understand is he picks the Jordan River, but what he doesn't understand in the Jordan Plains is a place called Sodom and Gomorrah. He picks the Jordan Plains, not recognizing that by the time we get to Genesis 19, that there's going to be fire and brimstorm on his choice. I came to tell somebody, don't worry about what your enemy picked because God going to burn that up too. Whatever. He doesn't even understand that what looks good today it's going to be under salt water tomorrow. Be not weary in well-doing. The only thing you have to do is keep doing right. If you keep doing right, he picked the Jordan Plains, and at the time he picked it, it looked good. But let me tell you, everything that looked good ain't. <laughs> Don't get discouraged because the fruit of your sacrifice doesn't grow when you plant it. You reap what you sow. 
but you don't always reap it where you sowed it. Flowers don't grow because we plant seeds. Flowers grow because bees and other insects come and the pollen wraps itself around their physiology. They go to another location and when they shake it off, they grow in another place what they gathered in another place. And I'm telling some of you all that you may have sowed it in her, but you're going to reap it in him. And you sowed it here, and you may reap it there. I got people coming in my life right now blessing me that I've known for months, and I thought it was going to come after people I've been pouring into for years. And then I recognized that it was good that I was afflicted. And now I am at a place in my life, and it took me a long time to get to this place where whatever happens, I'm okay with it. Somebody shout, I'm okay with it. Come on, somebody shout, I'm okay with it. Devil, if you try to take it, it means God's got something else for me. If I lose this job, it means God got another job. Devil, if you take this house, it means God got another house. If this opportunity don't work, it means God's got another opportunity. Is there anybody that'll give God about 15 seconds of praise that knows that God's got you surrounded, that he's got you covered, that everything is going to be all right, that nothing will separate you from the love of God? You can make it. Why don't you just hug two people and look them right in the face and say, you can make it. These trials you've been going through. God wants you to know he knows just what to do. You can make it. Come on, somebody lift your hands in this place. You can make it I don't care What you're going through God knows just what to do These heavy burdens Will not last forever just look at somebody and say, you can make it. Somebody didn't know they could make it. They thought it was all over. They thought it was coming to an end. They thought that if they threw in the towel, that God was going to bury them. God knows what he's doing. All things are working together for your good. And when people make your life difficult, just know that tough times make tough people. God is trying to make you rock solid so he can use you as a foundation to build something on top of. Peter, upon you, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Somebody say, God, you're trying to build something on me. rejected stone became the chief cornerstone the favor is on you and when Lot leaves you are going to be fine I only know one person that my destiny is totally tied to her name is Felicia. Everybody else, I can do with that. Everybody else. And, and guess what? You too. All them friends you got at the job, you don't need them. They accessories, they're good to have.
Torrance, all you need is Kim. You don't need me. We're, we're grateful when God connects us. But, but he lived 30 years before he ever saw me. I know, but not as much as me. You better be crap. Papa, Papa Watson, I'm looking at him right now. He's, he's retired and, and blessed and God blessed him, but we're connected. We decided to love each other. He and mama have been married longer than I've been alive. He doesn't need me. But he needs her. Take her away, that goes the children. Take her away, that goes the favor. Take her away, that goes all of the things they built together. I know this word is in somebody's soul. Some of y'all gave your life to somebody and you thought that it was going to end up how you picked. And it don't always end how you thought it was going to end. Sometimes you move too fast. They ain't ready to move at that pace. And when you force somebody to do something that you 